All right, Founders, it is time for another Pitch Deck Critique and Review, and this time we've got Memento. This is a pre-seed deck, and they are trying to raise 250 k to launch their MVP. Before we continue, my name is Ed Kang, seven-time Founder Fighter with two exits. Fancy way of saying I failed a bunch of times to your benefit because I like to use videos like this, especially if you're early stage and you are trying to raise pre-seed or seed funding. I want to help you avoid some of the catastrophic mistakes that I've made. Not to say you're not going to make mistakes, but hopefully I minimize the damage because this is hard enough as it is. If you are a founder out there and you're looking for your own pitch deck critique and review, please stay till the end of the video. I'm going to show you how. And to this founder here, thank you so much for sending in. I only do these if I think that it's going to be a worthwhile lesson for all of us to learn from. Very courageous of you. I recommend that you take my review and you show it to colleagues, friends, associates, potential investors, and say, hey, what do you think about Ed's advice on our pitch deck? And I think you're going to find a lot of validation for my points. But of course, this is just my opinion. I'm one advisor. A lot of advisors have different ways of doing pitch decks. What you want to do is get regular consistent feedback and you want to ask what are the themes, what are the patterns of feedback that I'm getting and maybe I should take action on them and iterate my pitch deck and improve it just a little more every time. And for all you out there in YouTube land, all you founders, if you can like and comment, I appreciate all the feedback. And if this is your first time joining me, please consider subscribing. I appreciate it. Let's jump into this deck. I appreciate this tagline. This works extremely well if you are using this as a way to present the slide and you're saying this, so I'm reading it. That means this is a little redundant. You don't have to say this here. You can keep it in if you want. But I like the fact that this tagline is very straightforward. Tells me where I'm going. The problem. And right away, I see the issue. You right here, traditional language learning apps, i.e. Duolingo, do not help reach conversational fluency. I'm going to say, how do you know? This is similar to you going out and saying, personal finances are broken. The healthcare system is broken. Education is broken. You're pointing out something generic and you're not really giving the investor something to sink their teeth into as an investor from an investor's mindset. If you are going to go out there and say that a current solution is broken and therefore is the problem, you better have some stats to really back it up. For example, right now, Generation Z are leaving dating apps in record numbers. And you can say flat out, X millions of Gen Z are leaving dating apps because they prefer this and nothing out there is solving that problem. But if you're making a claim that a current solution doesn't do what they say they're going to do, you better back it up. And right now, you haven't done that. Take a look at what you've said here. Language exchange apps tend to solve this, but allowing you to speak to someone in your target language, but they have critical flaws. Okay, we're still in the same territory. You're saying the solution is the problem. It's hard to find partners, platform misuse, lack of feedback, users must manually match, et cetera, et cetera. I'd rather see you say something like, language is best learned when practicing with a partner, but it's hard for current users to find the right partners to practice with. Maybe even a stat and say something to the effect of language learning becomes 50% more effective when used in conjunction with partners, but X percent of current users cannot find a partner to work with. I'm just throwing some things out there, but you can get an idea of how I'm repositioning your problem, not to just make this inflammatory accusation to current solutions, because the issue is if I'm an investor and I've never used Duolingo and I've never tried to learn another language, then I have no idea what you are talking about. In fact, I am not a Duolingo user. I've tried to use another app to learn language when I lived in China. And let me tell you that I understand I did not reach conversational fluency, not because of what you said here, because of different issues. So now as an investor, I don't believe you, you've lost me. You should be giving me an insight into the problem that I have not seen before and educating me like I have never ever encountered this issue before and I don't have any domain expertise. I don't have the inside language. So readjust your problem to make sense for the investor out there. This problem statement does not work. The Memento solution, it's like Omegle. Now here's the thing. I know Omegle only because I watch funny YouTube videos of people scaring each other or people doing really dumb things on Omegle. I've never used Omegle. I don't think most people are going to know, especially investors, what Omegle is. The second thing is Omegle, I know for a fact, shut down because they could not enforce abuse policies. There's just so much trolling and everything going on there. Omegle is a bad word for people who understand what Omegle is. So while you try to be derivative, if you are saying that you are going to be the Uber for language learning or the Uber for this, everybody better know what your derivative is referring to. Omegle is not doing it. You're also saying here all this information, which is more like how to, you want a solution that matches the problem. Let's say, for example, 
that most users need to practice with partners, but they can't find partners online, then what you're going to say is we have an algorithm matching with an AI copilot that helps people find partners. You see what I'm doing? On top of which, let's go back to your problem slide. You're already saying here it's hard to find partners, platform misuse, lack of feedback, and then your solution, you are saying there's algorithm matching, anonymous matching, there's an AI copilot. So I'm going to infer that the AI copilot helps with platform misuse and personally AI tutor addresses the lack of feedback. All right, you've got your problem and solution matching up, but the way that you presented all of it and put it together, it's not making sense. It creates too much cognitive friction for the investor to figure out. Notice how much time I've spent going back and forth on problem solution. I should have been able to figure this out in literally one minute, under one minute, but I've got so much to read and I'm not connecting the dots help connect the dots for the investor and put it into one sentence each problem solution with a few bullet points if you need to and then you're going to be fine how it works i'm not even going to read this immediately i'm looking at everything and i do not want to read it you've lost me there's no structure to it you'd rather have one two three four right up at the top with just some boxes all this i don't need to see everything in here this slide is blowing away it's the wall of text and graphics from an investor standpoint they don't have time to look through this slide competitive analysis okay i'm looking here tandem i have no idea what tandem is hello talk i have no idea what hello talk is so that means the rest of this means nothing i've seen that you got this venn diagram but you're saying it's a mix between tandem and hello talk or this is the issue here that these two come together, create these problems. This is not a competitive analysis because where is your solution in all of this? This is not making sense. So you'd rather do a quadrant or features and benefits matrix. This competitive slide is not working. The market, this slide should come right after your problem slide, but let's take a look. Target market, global language learns with intermediate to advanced proficiency level. I don't understand what you mean there. Is this a TAM SAM SOM? The TAM is every single person learning a language and your SAM is intermediate to advanced. Long plan you're saying you're gonna launch in Latin America is that your Sam I don't understand you're getting more details here but look at this slide it's so packed you've got little text all over the place I don't understand I'm lost help me help me help me monetization freemium all right so I'm gonna look at here free plan with ads premium plan with advanced features let's just have a price under each one that's all you have to do but you got goals to reach 40 million monthly active users this is not your monetization this is not your business model you don't need to have all this stuff this are your projections and which point you don't even know what your projections are going to be because you haven't generated revenue projections are usually fantastically way off so don't put this in your business model slide just say we're going to have freemium and we're going to have a plan with advanced features and we're going to charge this amount for each here you get to your team slide i cannot tell you how many which ways this team slide is not going to work for you first of all you got this big paragraph of text with your life story investors do not care you've got some stuff in here talking about how you've worked for different companies you're saying i'm building memento to provide these tools I wish I had during my language learning journey. Then you have this curious thing here. I'm actively seeking a technical co-founder. We don't need to know this because on top of which you've got this lead designer here, this lead backend developer. Are they your technical team? Question marks all over the place in terms of your team. And this slide is just so jam packed. Investors are not going to read this. What you do have working for you, you've got a lead backend developer who has actually got a lot of experience doing what this app is going to do. Question is, why isn't this person becoming your co-founder? That's what I'm going to wonder right here. Is this person a freelancer? How does this relationship work? Question marks across the board. This team is not giving me any confidence whatsoever. We are seeking 250K to develop and launch an MVP of Memento within three months. Great. X, Y, Z. Raising X to reach Y milestone in Z time frame. That makes sense. But I've got one flag here right away. You're raising 250K and you have AI washed this like crazy. AI co-pilots, AI matching, algorithms, all those things. You haven't shown me that there's any prototype in there. 250K, I don't understand how 250K is going to get there. You haven't given me any proof or evidence of how things are actually stacking up in terms of my confidence that you can get there with 250K. This is where you have not de-risked this investment enough through this pitch deck to give me confidence that it's going to happen if I plunk in 250K. Let me give you a warning, and I hope all the other founders who have watched this and stayed up to this point in time are going to listen to this very carefully, especially if you're in the space. First, B2C apps, incredibly congested. You better bring a massive differentiator. 
Second, if you are going to go after some entrenched competition like Duolingo being one of the biggest games in town, you better really show what Duolingo is not doing or something that you do infinitely better and focus on one thing. For 250 k you better be able to build one thing that blows them out of the water. Your assumptions better be so contrarian to say that there is a completely different way to learn language. So if all you did was slap on to a regular language learning app, AI co-pilots, matching like dating and all that feedback stuff, you're basically saying we can do things maybe 10% better than what's happening out there. You don't think everybody else is working on that solution? Back to 250K, that's all you need? Let me digress here and tell you a quick story about someone who brought me a social app kind of like a Facebook killer, and I rolled my eyes, and I said, I don't see how this is gonna kill Facebook in the beginning, and I sat with this founder, and they have a thesis that's so contrarian to how all of the social media works, as I began talking and we began wrestling with it, I said, huh, this is a really bad idea that if it takes off, will change the world. This is one of those ideas that's so contrarian that people are going, this is nuts, this is absolutely nuts. But then I encouraged the founder, I said, let's go out and prove it because investors were already starting to see it. Investors want to invest in contrarian ideas. So back to language learning apps, you better bring something so contrarian to catch the investor's attention because right now it's a 10% solution and I'm looking for a 10X game changer in a way that tells me this is a better way to learn language going in the opposite direction of where these other apps are going. And that summarizes the issue that I have with this deck. You have basically assaulted the investor with so much information with buzzy words that you think investors are going to be impressed with and they're not going to be. Go back to your thesis, work it out, and give me more confidence that you have the team that's going to pull it off. In fact, you should probably build an MVP. You should get me some customer validation, customer discovery. Idea validation all around is necessary for this type of thing. So far, you haven't given me any evidence to prove me wrong. And believe me, I hope you do prove me wrong because every founder has a better than 0% chance of doing something amazing. Keep working at it. I just want to encourage you. For everybody else, leave some encouraging thoughts for this founder and let him know what you think. And if you are looking for your own pitch deck critique and review, as promised, leave a comment. But I need you to leave a comment and explain to me what your startup is. In one sentence, what are you going to be pitching? Because there are some pitch decks that I'm no longer going to be taking, again, because of the amount of volume that's coming through. And I'll let you know the instructions that we have to do a little bit of process back and forth by email to understand whether I'm going to do a pitch deck review, whether it's worth your time, because I don't want you to be wasting it. I'd rather have you working on your startup. That's it for this one. Thanks, everyone, for checking it out. I'll see you in the next critique and review.